Vocals. She really just nailed it. This album shaped me. Okay, speak now. Taylor's version. Let's talk about it. Okay, so it's been four or five days since Speak Now came out. For some reason, for the past few album releases, I have not been home for the release and I've, I've had like these trips planned. And so when Midnight's came out, I was in Greece. And now when Speak Now came out, I was on a road trip in Montana. So I had to kind of make do with the situation. I had friends there, you know, it was very chaotic. And so I'm gonna show you guys our reaction to the vault tracks because I was able to record my reaction to the vault tracks and a few of the main tracks on the album but essentially we ran out of time it was way too late there was just a lot going on and so I thought today I'm gonna show you that reaction and then I'm gonna go through the album and kind of do like a second reaction analysis like a second impression if you will because I have listened to the whole album but I think with these re-records you kind of need to sit with the songs for a while to really get the differences the little changes kind of compare and contrast what she kept the same what she improved on and just other little things and so as a speak now girly this album it's just like was so exciting for me because Speak Now was like the era that I became a fan. And so I have my original CDs. I got the Target one, I've got the normal one. This album shaped me so much in my high school experience and everything. My first favorite song was Sparks Fly and then it was Mean. Over the years, there's been so many songs on this album that have like really hit home for me. Last Kiss being literally my favorite Taylor Swift song. I am Last Kiss number one fan. I did go to Target while I was there and get the CD. And so we could do like a little unboxing. So let's do that. My vinyl is getting delivered today. So I don't have it yet. We have Lover in the background. I'm just like have a lot going on. I've got the purple chair, purple dress, Speak Now necklace from the Taylor Swift store that she dropped last summer. My mirror ball cup and then my Speak Now coaster. I can't wait to get my Taylor's version Speak Now coaster. But if you guys have been with my channel for Forever. I absolutely love these coasters. I have one for every single album. I will link it down below if you also want yourself a set of Taylor Swift album coasters. They're literally my favorite thing ever. Um, and this dress is from Target, so run, don't walk. One thing about me is that I hate these CD packaging. It's like so inconvenient to open up. Come on. Oh, okay. Oh, she's cracked. My CD is cracked. Dang it. The cover, the plastic part. Guess I'll just have to buy another one. Let's open her up. So here's the inside. So pretty. I love the aesthetic and I love that she did like a whole photo shoot for this album re-record. I do not have a CD player. I have one in my car, but I do not have my CD player. So I cannot play this, but I do have my record player. So when we do get the vinyl, we are going to play it. I just love lyric booklets. I used to like read these religiously. I don't know. They would like come apart at the binding from how much that I like read through them. And also I read this prologue on Twitter. Twitter or Tumblr, but this is like one of the longest prologues that she's written for an album. You can just tell how much this album means to her in that time of life. I don't think a lot of people realized how difficult this time was for Taylor because in her career. She was coming off this huge, huge high with Fearless being like one of the most awarded country albums of all time and following that up with something just as good or better is a lot of pressure and also she was getting a lot of criticism for not having the best vocal training and so in this little prologue she explains like how that felt how she took on this project and just completely decided to like basically prove herself to the industry that she was a true writer and a true artist who took herself seriously so it was interesting to get like another I don't know background to that time in her life so if you haven't read this go read the prologue it's online and throughout this album 
she has remained the solo writer of all of these songs, which is honestly one of the reasons I love this album the most. This is like top tier lyrics and some of the best lyrics she has ever written is on this album and it's just so raw. And Taylor is the executive producer of this album, the only one. She obviously had Aaron Dessner and Jack Antonoff work with her on production, but she is like the executive, so that's pretty cool. Okay, let's jump into the album, shall we? First, I will show you guys our reaction to the vault tracks in our like, you know, little listening party situation. So I will insert that here for you to watch. It's 10.01 and we're waiting for it to load on YouTube because I like to have the lyric videos up when I listen to it. We are so excited for Better Than Revenge, we are it's so, not even funny. Okay, we're listening, okay, here's the order. Better Than Revenge, vault tracks, then start from the beginning.
Oh my god, Cass is crumbling. Oh my god. This is like a slow song. It's like Paramore. Paramore. Valentine's Day. 
Valentine's Day, what up? Where you wear is like a ball on a rainstorm. Okay, so as you can see, like that was highly chaotic. We had the four of us that were on the road trip, my two friends and my sister, and this was like our third night. So we were like exhausted because we had been driving and doing stuff for like 12 hours every single day. And also along with that, my high school friend lives where we were staying. So I was visiting with her and she came to the party and she brought her friend. And so there was like six of us just like screaming and dancing. And it was honestly so fun. But as you can see, it was chaotic and it was kind of hard to like focus on lyrics without just like, I don't know. That was just like our real raw reaction. I usually need to listen to some songs like quite a few times through before I form like a full opinion of it. Starting at the beginning, we're just gonna try to listen through this whole album. It's super, super long. I feel like with Fearless, there was a lot of vocals that were improved and it was like a little easier to tell the difference and I loved everything about how she did Fearless. And then when we got to Red, I don't know, it was different because the production was more poppy and some of it didn't feel like the exact same. There, there's a little more nuance with the differences between the two. And I also think with Speak Now, vocally, this is a very challenging album to sing, especially live. And so there's so much belting happening and there's like notes and just runs and things this is an album that you scream, you know? So anyways, let's listen to mine. I think that's like the first one I noticed. As a lion on the 
couch. I don't know, she did something different there. Like, I feel like sometimes when she changes the inflection, it's always a good idea. It's like she knew what to do. I don't know how to explain that, but she is so intuitive. Oh, I just need to change this just slightly enough that you can tell the difference, but just slightly enough that it doesn't take away from the original version and it makes it better. I can see it. So I went to Nashville night three on the Arrows tour and she did a piano version of mine. I feel like, I don't even know, completely reinvented the song with that performance because the piano version sounds so much more emotional. I don't know how to explain. Like this one is like, you know, you're jumping on your bed screaming it or like in your car singing it with your friends. But like when she played it on piano, it just like hit so much harder and it felt more mature because obviously when she wrote the song she was 19 or 20 and now that she's 33 I feel like it just hits different I don't know it hits a lot harder these days anyways oh chills She sounds so good. One thing I noticed about this album, just hearing it, I like listened to it on my plane home. Her voice is so clear. She just sounds very strong and unwavering in her voice and her vocals. You can just tell how much she has improved. One of my favorite songs, my first like favorite Taylor Swift song was Sparks Fly. Absolutely obsessed. I feel like with Sparks Fly, there's not much she changed. I just think it's easier for her to sing now that she has a more mature voice, but still hits just as hard. Okay, next is Back to December. This song, oh my God. Also, can we talk about how Taylor Lautner is literally in Taylor's music video? Like. He is in a music video for Taylor Swift in 2023. If you had told me that even one year ago, I would not have believed you. Like it is insane. Taylor Swift had her ex be in her music video about saving the album that had the song that she wrote about him. So all I'm saying is that I hope Harry Styles is next. One of the best hooks of all time. So production wise, that one is pretty much the same. And I do think that Taylor is trying to keep it as close to the original production as possible and only making changes where she thinks it will improve the song. So that one, 13 out of 10. Now we have Speak Now, the title track. This one's a, a big one. Dear John. Even in the first like opening chord, it's like the guitar is so much clearer and much more defined. And it's funny because I've known this, but the beginning of this song and the style of this song is so similar to a John Mayer song. It's almost like she is using that to kind of like flip the narrative, kind of like burn him in his own art form, like in his own style, which is so clever of her. Like that little electric guitar riff 
is so John Mayer and it's so clever of her to kind of use like the same chords that he does in his songs and so this song is very similar to the sound of the song Gravity. If you haven't heard that song just listen to like the opening like guitar part for that song and it will blow your mind how similar Dear John is to that song. Anyways I thought I would just point that out as somebody who plays guitar. I will just point out that bending of the chord is so John Mayer coded. That is so insane. I feel like I knew this, but like hearing it in the Taylor's version, just like listening so closely, I'm like, oh my God, she is next level. Obviously we know that. She always takes it a step further. She's always thinking like six moves ahead and then some. Expert. It's sorry, I'm keeping my glory. Or if I could catch me so dumb. She really just nailed it. She nailed it. Next is Mean and this. This is like one of my top favorite songs. I know, I feel like I say that a lot, but like actually this song made me a Swifty. This was my anthem. I would listen to this on repeat for like three, four hours straight. Upon listening to this song, I think she did it justice. I'm very happy with the re-recording and I was just so excited for this one because it held so much weight in my life and still does to this day. To know that she owns it now, it's just like very satisfying, so. You, with your words like knives and swords and weapons that you use against me. You, picking on the weaker man. Can I say that the banjo is much more pronounced and it sounds much more country, which I think is really funny. And maybe that's the way that she wanted it to be originally. But I would sit in my room in high school and play this on guitar, you know, 2 a.m. and just like sing and think there's never gonna come a day where people hear me play guitar. It was just for me in my room. And that's why these songs are so important to me. It's because this was the album I learned on guitar in eighth and ninth grade. I just never thought that I would be literally like teaching them to people all over the world. So anyways, full circle moment for me. And if you know anything about the original meaning of this song, apparently there was a performance during Fearless era that a critic just ripped her apart for her vocal performance or something. And so she wrote mean because of this review. There's such thing as constructive criticism and then there's just mean criticism and that's kind of what this was. She wrote this song, released it on Speak Now as a single, won a Grammy. I think she won two Grammys with Mean. If that's not like, I'll show you. And literally like the meaning of this song. It's just so great. And she also performed this at the Grammys in 2012. She got a standing ovation from everybody. So if that's not a lesson to everybody that you can't let other people get to you, and you use that as fuel for your success and the best revenge is happiness and you are going to go on to do great things and all they're ever going to be is someone who insulted you. My favorite part of the whole song. And a liar, empathetic, and a lonely love in me. Yeah, yep. 
Okay, track seven. Ooh, this is a good one. The Story of Us. The guitar kind of sounds a little different. Like a little more rock. Like super rock. Killed it. There's definitely certain notes that I like look for to see if she changed or like, you know, if she's gonna sing it like even better than it hits like in the original version. And so far, she has not disappointed me. Ooh, I like that. The song is so good. Yeah, vocals. Vocals. The end. Yeah. I think some people have mixed opinions about the like slightly different production of this song, but I think it goes. It's just like such a rock song, you know, like the, the drums. The drums get me in the electric guitar and it's just like, love it. The vocals are next level for sure. And then we have Never Grow Up, which she sang as a surprise song last weekend at the, you know, the day that she released the album. This song is so nostalgic. Again, it was a song I learned on guitar in high school. Now that I'm literally 25, I moved out of my childhood house like a month ago. It hits a lot harder now. I love this guitar picking pattern. You got nothing to regret. Oh, darling, don't you ever go? Don't you ever go? Just say this little will desert you. Just try to never go. I feel like it hits different because her voice is so much more mature now. I keep saying it hits different, but it does. This whole album hits so aggressively different because of just, I don't know, 2010 to 2023. It's so nostalgic. Like even more nostalgic than Fearless because Fearless was just all fun and like, you know, love story, you belong with me. Whereas Speak Now is hit hard hitting emotions of growing up for sure. Okay, that's enough of that. And then we have Enchanted, which is the crown jewel of this album at the moment because, you know, it earned its spot on the Eras tour. Hopefully, Long Live is permanently added to the set list, but the jury is still out on that. She added it for the last two shows because Speak Now came out. And so I really, really hope that she keeps Long Live on the set list. That would be absolutely amazing. But anyways, Enchanted, the embodiment of this entire album is so like magical, whimsical storybook. If this album had like a trailer song, it would be this one. And these are some of like, her best lyrics ever. Like in this first verse, oh my gosh, poetry.
I feel like this song is very vocally challenging, especially because the verses are so low, like lower range, and the chorus takes you like way up in register to like the part where it's like, I'm wonderstruck. And she, the way that she says wonderstruck in this new version is so clear and perfect. So good, I'm gonna listen to that part again. I could just listen to that word on repeat. So good. Okay, I think that, that hit so hard. And then we get to what some people might say is the most controversial track on this album, Better Than Revenge. Yeah, everybody has an opinion about the choice Taylor made to change the lyrics. And what I will say is, I think it depends on the reason that Taylor changed it because I have been a big fan of this song, not changing the lyrics because, you know, it just feels like that line is very petty and immature and that just makes sense for a 19 year old that thinks this girl stole her boyfriend. So basically I saw a TikTok and I was trying to figure out what I thought about this, but this girl kind of explained it better than I could. But she said, if Taylor changed it because she regrets writing it and she feels bad that she said that and she didn't actually like think that and that was like her choice, her decision, okay, like, that's fine, that's great. It, this is Taylor's version, she can do what she wants. But if it was because she was like bullied by people and only changing it because people would be mad if she didn't change it, it just kind of like feels like, mm, you know? Because again, I don't think it's that deep. Okay, in my opinion on the, the lyric that she replaced it with, I feel like she could have done something different. I feel like the line was supposed to be petty and portray someone like, kind of like a mean girl per se. And the line is poetic and it's a great metaphor, but it just isn't, it doesn't roll off the tongue and it's not hard hitting. I just feel like, not that I feel like I could come up with something better than Taylor Swift. I mean, it's her song, she can do whatever she wants, but I feel like there, there's probably a couple other directions that she could have taken it. I think the second part is fine. She was holding the matches. I think that's fine because it's very similar to the word mattress. So people are already like to have muscle memory when they're singing that song. And so I think because that word is similar to mattress that it kind of fits. But I just I just do not like the part about the moth. I, I don't like it. He was a moth to the flame. I feel like that belongs on like folklore. Like that that's a poetry line, not in a petty song that a teenager wrote about a girl stealing her boyfriend. I just feel like it could have been something like, I got caught in the crossfire, she was holding the matches. Like something like that might have been better. I don't know. I obviously don't know better than Taylor Swift, but it's fine. I think people are a lot more aggressively upset about this than me. I I kind of knew she was going to change it, so I'm not that upset about it, but I just wish that it would it rolled off the tongue more and that it fit with the rest of the song more cohesively. Um, but again, that is just my opinion. It doesn't really matter what I think because she made that decision. The rest of the song is great. That's just the one part that I'm just like. But now it's kind of like a joke. I saw someone say like, oh, that's so real of her to compare a boy to an insect. I'm like, okay, yeah. Anyways, that's my thoughts. Please let me know your thoughts. I did a poll on my Instagram and most people did not like the new lyrics, but feel free to tell me your opinions, but just be nice about it. <laughs> okay, let's listen, let's, let's, let's just listen to it. I think, yeah, the production is solid.
She did that, that run was even better than the original. Let's listen to that again. Oh my gosh, wow, Taylor. And then we have Innocent. I, this is another one that hits different when you grow up. And I think because these songs came out in 2010 that I was only 13, 14. So I just didn't get the gravity of songs like this and the maturity in thought process. But obviously like now that I'm older, oh my gosh. Yeah, I think this is one that I'm gonna appreciate more now that I've lived life a little bit rather than back when I was like 13, 14. She wrote in her description that she recorded this at 32 and still growing up now. And I think this, a lot of these songs hit different for her as well. Like coming back, revisiting all of the lyrics and everything. And I saw something that said like, this was not the song people were expecting her to write after what happened at the VMAs. They were expecting some tongue in cheek, more like reputation vibes, but this is a song about empathy, like forgiveness for someone who wasn't sorry for what they did. And also just kind of like, having like a deep understanding of other people. And I feel like that's not something you just like have, you learn that and like Taylor learned that way early on in her life. Um, I'm definitely gonna be adding this to my like crying playlist. And just with her voice sounding more mature and just more just like so much stronger mm. this song is about to hit so hard Yep. Haunted. I've seen a lot of people say this production kind of drowns out her voice, but I don't know, this song is very intense, so I think it just makes it sound even more intense. Just chaotic and very, very emotional. I kind of get what people are saying about how like the production's kind of drowning out her voice a little bit. So maybe if it, I don't know, her voice was more prominent, but the bridge is like my favorite part vocally. So let's listen to that. Yeah, still hits. Then we have Last Kiss, which is my favorite song from Speak Now and probably the most streamed song in my life ever. <laughs> and it's very, very sad. It's arguably Taylor Swift's saddest song. I think it's Taylor's saddest song. And she said that in her prologue saying, Last Kiss is the saddest song I've ever written. It's very simply a sad song. It's not like sad and angry. It's not sad and desperate. It's not sad. It's just like, just sadness. Some of Taylor's best lyrics ever. This song 
never fails to just make me sob uncontrollably. Happy last kiss day, belated to everybody who celebrates and wakes up at 1.58 a.m. on July 9th. And she played this last weekend and I knew she was, but I still cried about it. I, I have listened to it since, but I have heard that the um, shaky breath is not in the song. And I don't think it's in the song to the extent of the original, but I feel like there's still, there's still a lot of emotion here. So anyways, she messed this song up. So I hope she plays it on the piano again, specifically on August 5th at my show. <laughs> I literally cannot listen to this song in public. <laughs> That's the other thing, like we listened to like the really upbeat songs when the album first came out for our reaction and I just knew that the these kinds of ones, is, those are songs you listen to alone and <laughs> like not, not film. You really have to like absorb the emotion here. This is uh, my favorite verse. Yeah, the shaky breath is not entirely there, but the emotion is, so. You know, maybe maybe Taylor knew we weren't stable enough to continue to have that in the song. She was like, girl, keep it together. I'm taking out this shaky breath because I know you can't handle it. Okay, that's enough. And then we have Long Live. Of course, this is such an important song in the fandom and the fact that she added it to the set list was just like... And then she brought the koi fish guitar and played that. That is such an iconic symbol of Speak Now. This song was my ringtone or like my uh, wake up alarm for like three years in college. So I have a love hate relationship with the first 10 seconds of this song. But after that, I, I can get over it. The worst thing you could ever do is make a Taylor Swift song your wake up song because then it just like associates a negative feeling with it. But this song is so special and I am praying that it continues to stay on the set list. I said remember this moment In the back of my mind Ooh. The time we stood with our shaking hands The crowds and stands went wild and it's funny because I feel like she wrote this song and she thought she was at her peak. Little did she know this would just be the beginning, truly. Like she thought like she had made it and she was on the downfall. Now we know that's how she felt by listening to Castles Crumbling. It's kind of like the other side of the coin. There's Long Live and then there's Castles Crumbling where she just like is filled with doubt and imposter syndrome. Long Yes, you will, girly. Spinning around confetti, falls to the ground, making memories. Promise me this that you'll stand by me forever. But if God forbid, fate should step in. Pictures. Please tell him my name. Oh. Tell 
This song is so full circle because it's like, I will. I, I have all the albums. Like, they will live on forever. Like, years and years down the road, I'm gonna be telling my kids. Yeah, I went to the Eras tour and it was wild and Taylor Swift is the best singer there ever was. I don't know, just nuts. Okay, slight intermission and I will be back to do the rest of the album. I've been sitting here for legitimately over two hours. So I'm gonna take a little break and I'll see you back here. All right, it is the next day. I did not have time to finish the video yesterday, so here we are. And we are going to listen to the vault tracks. Yes, I did put on the same outfit. Today, I did a little Speak Now side braid for you guys. Actually, I haven't listened to ours or Superman yet, so we're gonna do that first. This song is so cute, so cute. And originally, people liked this song so much that she made it a single, even though it was on the deluxe version of the album. And I think this music video is so underrated, and I feel like not a ton of people have seen this music video. So if you haven't seen the R's music video, go see it. It's so cute. Don't you worry, you're pretty little mind. People got to things that shine in life. Makes a love look hard. The best part right here. I love the gap between your teeth. And I love the riddles that you speak. Cause my heart is yours. <laughs> okay, moving on to Superman, which again, super underrated. I love this song so much and so many times people rank this last on Speak Now and I have to disagree. I love this song so much. I wonder if he knows how much that I miss him. I feel like if this song was on the main album, people would not overlook it as much. Okay, moving on to our first vault track which is Electric Touch. This was produced by Aaron Dessner, featuring Fall Out Boy, which was so interesting and honestly like so perfect for this song. It totally embodies like that era, you know, 2000s vibes. I think this could have been like one of those songs in one of those movies, like rom-com, I don't know. Anyways, this has been one of my favorites from the vault for sure. Like, can't you just see this at the credits of a movie or something? Just like even that intro. Very nostalgic sound. Just breathe, just relax and be okay. Just an hour till your car's in the driveway. All I know is to see me to break my heart and bring it back to life. This part. So good. 
Also, the hook of this chorus is just so good, and I just can't believe this song sat in the vault. Like, it's crazy to me. I mean, I get it. It doesn't really match with the rest of the Speak Now album, but that seems to be the theme with the, this vault, with Fearless and with Red Vault. They totally match those eras, and I feel like we missed out on a part of the Speak Now era because Taylor was trying to put together an album that, like, to follow Fearless and try to make it perfect and try to make it all like make sense when in actuality she was like very seriously like experimenting with her sound her lyrics the production of her songs she was making that cross from country into pop and I feel like she backed away from songs like this because this is like not a country song this is like a you know pop punk 2000s vibe so anyways I'm really glad she got to finally put these songs out because it would have been tragic if they just sat there forever this part this bridge is so good their voices are so good together this is my favorite part That is like the best run ever. This part, the breakdown. This is so like 2000s. I can just dance forever. So now we have When Emma Falls In Love and we are assuming this means Emma Stone because back in 2010, Taylor did an interview and I think they asked her like what person would you trade lives with or something like that and she said Emma Stone and we know that they're friends and Emma Stone came to the opening of the Eras tour and so this is a cute little song of just like Taylor you know again seeing love from the outside and seeing the experience of others and kind of taking that inspiration this song really just gives like you are in love like Taylor is the third person in this like narrative. I always really like the storytelling songs. I feel like that's totally like the theme of Speak Now in general, but yeah. When Emma falls in love, she paces the floor, closes the blinds and locks the door. Here's another thing to point out. The chords in this song are very fearless. She plays a chord progression that she has on a ton of fearless songs and also like the melody slash like if you played the song on guitar is very similar to Jump Then Fall and I think it gives the same like vibes. When Emma falls in love, she calls up her mom, jokes about the ways that this one go wrong. She's a character. That's my favorite line. Mm -hmm. Taylor is so good at describing somebody, but not using a ton of words. Like that was literally just like two stanzas and you already kind of get the, the vibe of the kind of person Emma is, like how they are in love, and also just like how people see her. She's the kind of book that you can't put down. That is such a poetic way of saying like, she is very interesting and everybody wants to get to know her kind of thing. And then Taylor brings it back to her being the narrator, like, sometimes I wish I was her. So then you become aware again that Taylor is telling the story and that she, these are her feelings about like, I wish I was that kind of person, like belonging, you know? Emma is so sure of herself, she can put you in your place, and she doesn't lose herself in love like I do. And she's like, it's very much a comparison of herself. It's kind of funny when she says, when Emma falls in love, I'm also learning from her. And I feel like that's so relatable because even if you haven't gone through certain things and your close friends have, you also learn from them as well. I'm learning 
Which is so ironic because I feel like for us, Emma is Taylor and it's like when Taylor falls in love, we listen to all her songs and we learn from her. Anyways, that's just kind of like a full circle moment. The next song is I Can See You and as you guys can see from our like, you know, reaction to our first listen this song was shocking to say the least and i kept saying like there is a no way she could have put this on speak now back then it was just way too out of her like good girl image type of thing so funny that like little fearless speak now taylor wrote this song and it's so good and it's so catchy in the music video blew my mind oh my god it was so clever um i watched it on the Eras Tour live stream, so I saw it like when everybody else did, and it's like we knew that Taylor Lautner and Joey King were gonna be in it, but I don't think we realized like what the video was gonna be like about. Like just the symbolism of them, you know, Joey King being in the mean music video, and also the other girl that was in the mean music video, them coming back and being in this one. Kind of like this secret mission to save Speak Now because they were also a part of it. And also Taylor Lautner, I said this before, but like I still can't believe that. Um, anyways, this is this song is so good. The guitar. Also does not fit with like the sound of the rest of Speak Now. Again, even this is different from Electric Touch, which is different from Emma Falls in Love. Like all of these vault tracks are so different, which is why I love this album so much. Also, people thought that little part sounded like mine, like ah uh, ah uh, uh, but like like a sultry version, like uh 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 uh. I don't know. Like some of these lyrics were absolutely so shocking. <laughs> I love that part. I would say the lyrics in this song are even more aggressive than some of the ones from Reputation. Taylor. She, she gets away with this for sure. Okay, next is Castle's Crumbling, which is so sad. I, for some reason, thought this song was gonna be upbeat, but it is not upbeat at all. I think just because I thought like Paramore, you know, rock vibes, I don't know. But this song is super like metaphorical because, you know, we have long live, the walls that we crashed through, I had the time of my life fighting dragons with you, fairy tale ending, and then we have this one, which is the other side of that like my castle's crumbling down they used to chant my name and now they hate me like literally so sad so sad I feel like she wrote this you know back in 2009 2010 and I still feel like these lyrics are like resounding and resonating now even listening to you're losing me from the vault like midnight's vault I wouldn't marry me either pathological people pleaser she's still like I just need to like go away and also in peace when she says the rain is always gonna come if you're standing with me she just knows that her life causes other people around her like just by knowing her they are also like subjected to the criticism and like the you know the darkness and everything so it's just this is just sad Oh, 
so good. Literally so sad. Okay, we have two more left. This video is getting extremely long. We have foolish one and I've seen so many funny TikToks of like me bopping to Enchanted when I really should have been listening to this song. Someone said like, imagine if this was the song that shaped me instead of Enchanted. Just kind of like saying like Enchanted was so whimsical and hopeful and like kind of very naive with love. And foolish one is kind of like a reality check. It's like, no girl, like he is not sending you love letters he's really just like messing around with you and you're just kind of like being very naive about it so um it's funny my cards are on the table use are in your hand chances are tonight you already got plans i needed this song a while ago <laughs> this part you are not the exception you will never learn your lesson foolish words check in your mouth <laughs> I will say this would have been the most relatable song from the vault for me back in 2010 when Speak Now came out. <laughs> Oh, this is a good one. Cause you got her on your arm and me in the wings. But she'll get your ring and you will say <laughs> you had the best of intentions. Maybe I will finally learn my lesson. Okay, we have the last song, Timeless. And the little like lyric video has pictures of her grandparents and that just makes me so emo. This is the perfect song to end this album because it's kind of like very storybook, like English major vibes because the entirety of Speak Now just seems like a storybook. Each song is a chapter moving through it. You've got every emotion under the sun. She always said folklore was the first time she was playing around with fiction and storytelling but speak now was actually the first time because she's like some of these things were not happening to me i wasn't interrupting a wedding i wasn't like moving in with somebody and like picturing our life together i wasn't you know doing all these things it was just kind of like the first time blurring the lines between her real feelings and real things that happened and also imaginary things thinking about the future just storytelling in general so i think this was the perfect song to end with down the block there's an antique shop and something in my head said stop so I walked in mm. on the counter was a cardboard box and the sign said photos 25 cents each love that you only find once in a lifetime because you don't put down I love the melody of the verses the chorus everything in another life that you still would have turned my head This song also kind of reminds me of Starlight and it's just one of those like songs Taylor writes about like, you know, an old couple like Mary's song. Like both of those songs have this like, oh my, you know, we've got Starlight, oh my, what a marvelous tune. And then we've got Mary's song, oh my, my, my. Both of those songs are about like old couples that she took their like love story and created a song out of. So I think this falls kind of into that category as well. Okay, that is all of Speak Now Taylor's version. It has only taken me three different sittings to really dive into this album. Once I've listened to it a little bit more, I will do a ranking video. It hasn't even been a week yet, so I think I need a little bit more time. But let me know what you guys think of Speak Now Taylor's version and all of your opinions in the comments. I'd love to read what you guys think of the album, your favorites, um, and everything else. Thank you guys for being here, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!